I have a beautiful uh, prayer here uh, to start our service um, that was uh, that Miss Gwen thought about, talked with the Lord about. These are the words that he put on her heart. So I'd like for y'all to uh, bow your heads and close your eyes as we go to the Lord in prayer and hear this beautiful prayer from the heart of Miss Gwen. Lord, we come to you with humble hearts to thank you for all you do for us. Please clear our hearts and minds so we may be able to hear when you speak to us. We ask your blessing and gentle touch on all who are suffering from various problems, whatever they may be. We ask that you touch their hearts so that they will know and understand that you are the answer and you are in control. We need to realize that we should rejoice in you regardless of what our earthly situation might be. Lord, help us to understand you always answer our prayers in your time and way, not ours. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Wonderful prayer. Thank you very much, Ms. Gwen. Scripture reading this morning is going to come from the book of John, chapter 6. Book of John, chapter 6, and we're going to be verses 66 through 69. Book of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the fourth book of the New Testament. Gospel according to John. Chapter 6, verse 66, going through verse 69. Let us hear the reading of God's Word. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Then Jesus said to the twelve, Do you also want to go away? But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks God. Today's scripture will give you a little preview of what had just happened. Y'all remember the story about Jesus feeding about 5,000 people? Actually, it was 5,000 men. They didn't take into consideration women and children, so it was a bunch of people. And do y'all remember what he used to feed them? That's right, some bread and fish. He had just got through feeding 5,000 people and he had a crowd of Mom. disciples and followers now that was going to follow him and they were going with him everywhere. They were so excited and they were saying, Jesus, when are you going to do another miraculous sign? When are you going to do another one of those feeding 5,000? We're ready for something more. We're ready to show us something and they were so excited. They were there to get what they could get out of the situation. They were there to, to be entertained. They were there to get something for nothing. Does anybody like to get something for nothing? I've always enjoyed it. Take the truth. I ain't lie to you. They wanted to get something for nothing. And they were following and they were pumped up and they were excited and they were gung ho. And then Jesus started talking about something some requirements that they had to do. And now everything, the, the air was let out of the balloon. Jesus says, but there's some things that you need to do. And then he started talking about eating of his flesh, drinking of his blood. He started talking about sacrifice. He started talking about change. He started talking about feeding on him for your, for your daily nourishment. And you know what? That just didn't sit well with the people. Verse 66 says this. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. The crowd abandoned him. When he was doing miraculous signs and, and, and doing things, 
for them. It was wonderful. But then when he called them to do some things and said, these are what you will have to do. Then all of a sudden, the crowd left and only 12 remained. The crowd abandoned him. I want to make a few comments about being abandoned and I'm going to get back to the message for this morning. This is a funny thing that I want every one of us here to realize. It says in here that the disciples went back and walked with him no more. Notice something. Jesus doesn't try to stop them. When they turn and say, well, we're out of here. Jesus doesn't try to stop them. There's one thing that we need to realize. If somebody doesn't want to be part of your life, let them leave. Nothing happens. When you try to stop somebody who doesn't want to be part of your life anymore, nothing good comes out of it. The situation just gets intensified even more. Jesus didn't try to stop them because it was their choice. But there's another thing that we realize in this little story. Also, Jesus didn't didn't follow after them and stalk them and and like just everywhere they go, please, please, please come back, please. And everywhere they turned, there he was showing up outside the house, parking the shadows. There he was. You at the store, you turn around and there's Jesus walking around looking at you. He didn't follow, he didn't stalk them. No. Because if you're not worthy enough to be in someone's life, you don't need them in your life. If they leave, don't run after them. Don't follow after them. Don't be begging them to come back. Don't everywhere they turn be there. If they do not want to be part of your life, then you do not need them in yours. But this is what is very interesting about this. is Jesus, the scripture does not stop here. Jesus didn't say, well, man, these people have left. I better just sit down right here and wait for them to come back. Now the scripture goes on. We have... We have this much more no. Bible. The scripture went on. Jesus went on. Jesus did things. Paul did things. <laughs> Peter did things. Timothy. The scripture kept going because Jesus did not put his life on hold because somebody else had made a decision. If somebody abandons you, does it hurt? Yes. Is the hurt real? Yes. Do you put your life on hold and let them control the rest of your life? No. You can hurt and live life at the same time. That is what we can learn real briefly about abandonment in this story, is when somebody leaves you, you may be sad about it, but you keep on living. You keep on going. Don't beg them. Don't ever beg somebody to love you. Don't ever beg somebody. Sometimes I'll start preaching stuff and then it'll, a light bulb will go off and I just told somebody a week ago to do something exactly opposite. Sometimes we will say things with the best of intentions but then I'll listen to the Spirit of God and I'll start preaching a message and I'll say, that was Mark Hart talking a week ago. If somebody doesn't want to be part of your life, it's their choice. Let them go. Let them go. And for the person that I told differently who is here today, I'm sorry. Because that was the wrong information for me to give. Back to our message. Jesus says in verse 67 to the 12, do you also want to go? Do you also want to leave? And this is what amazes me because that Peter, Peter was a type of person that, boy, he was hot-headed and he would get out there and he would do things. But in this situation, Peter got it right. Peter got it right because he said, now listen to these words because this is what Peter said. Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Lord, are we going to leave too? Where, who are we going to go to? Who are we going to follow? You are the Christ. Who are we going to follow? Peter realized that Jesus was all he needed. Peter realized he didn't need the other 11. He didn't need the crowd that had just left. He realized that Jesus Christ 
was all he needed. That was the only thing he needed in his life. No individual can meet the needs of your life, every need of your life, except for Jesus Christ. He is the only one. I don't care how wonderful your spouse is, how wonderful your children or your parents are, how wonderful your best friend is. No one person can meet every need in your life except for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the only one. And Peter realized that. As much as Peter got wrong, Peter got some things right too. Where will I go, Lord? Who shall I go with? Anybody remember Ann Murray? Now you younger people won't remember her. Anybody remember Ann Murray? I was a different type. I was a different type of teenager because I can remember at 16 and 17 going to the record store when her new albums would come out and buy Ann Murray stuff. And 16 and 17 year old boys just didn't do that. It would be we got any teenage boys now? It'd be like you running out and buying all of Justin Bieber's new stuff. It just wouldn't sit well with your friends.